Hey everybody, I'm Spencer and I've had the chance to play through Machi Koro Legacy. Now this is the legacy version of Machi Koro. Now if you don't know what Machi Koro is, it's, um, it's been around for a while and it's a basic dice rolling game. Um, you'll roll dice and buy cards that'll be like different buildings and whatnot. You're building a village and each building will have some kind of benefit based on when dice are rolled, whether it's your turn or someone else's turn, and they may give you coins or they may make you give coins to your opponent. And there's just this cycle until everyone builds these certain particular buildings, um, and then when that happens, the game is over. And whoever triggered that first, whoever built those buildings first, wins the game. And so it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. A lot of people love it. You can find it in Target, and it's pretty popular, and I can see why they made a legacy version of it. Now, if you're not familiar with legacy games, basically that just means you're playing through a campaign, a number of different games that will, over the course of the game, over the course of the campaign, rather, uh, will make permanent changes to the game, whether that's ripping cards up, or opening secret envelopes or boxes, or putting stickers on the board. Uh, but they're permanent changes that affect the gameplay moving forward, and that's exactly what's happening in Machi Koro Legacy. First of all, I love that the rule book, right off the bat, goes into what is a legacy game. It explains everything that I just did, but in, in a way that applies to Machi Koro Legacy. So, major props for that, because I, I imagine that there may be people playing this game who've never played a legacy game before, so um, that's really great to start off the game with. Let's go ahead and get into those legacy elements. Now, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. I'm just going to give you some basic information that you would be able to find just by doing some research into the game. Um, so first of all, um, as you play through, you'll get new rules added. Uh, you'll be able to put stickers on the board. You'll be able to open these really cool secret boxes with some stuff in there, and you never know. It's always really exciting to open up those boxes. Um, you'll get new components out of there. Um, and of course, there are permanent, permanent changes that affect the gameplay moving forward. Now there is some story to the game. It's not too thick. You know, there's there's some light story there, and that's all told through what's called the legacy deck. Now that will also, um, in addition to you know each card, some of the cards re telling the story of what's happening as you play through the campaign. More cards will come out that will have new rules on them uh, to tell you what to do um, with the stuff that you find in the boxes. Or um, it may not be something in the box. It may just be an additional rule to add on to the game. Like most legacy games, Machi Koro Legacy starts off with just a plain game. The very first game of the campaign is just Machi Koro. So if you haven't played Machi Koro in a while and you want to get reacclimated, it's great for that. But it's also good for players brand new to Machi Koro. You don't have to have played Machi Koro before to enjoy this game. You can jump right in and on that first game learn everything you need to know to be able to move forward in the campaign. Now, I'd call the legacy elements light, so there's not a whole lot of heavy changing the mechanics. Um, there, there's stuff that's added, but on the whole, whenever you get down to it, it's, it's Machi Koro. And so the things are added, but not too much to get you confused about what's happening or confused about how to perform your action or there's too much to choose from. Um, there's just enough there to keep the game interesting as you go on. Um, and whenever you open those boxes or pull out those new rule cards, it just kind of keeps the game refreshing as you move along. Now, because of the way the legacy elements work in the game, you have to have the same group of people as you play each and every game. You can't have someone drop in. Um, that's, it's not possible, because once you've played through and started the game, you can't add somebody. And I guess technically someone could drop out, um, but then you'd be missing somebody in your competition. And I suppose you could swap somebody in, someone could come in, um, and take the place of somebody. Um, but they'd be missing some of the story that's that, that's come up to that point. Um, so overall, you do need to have the same group of people to really enjoy the gameplay experience. Now going back to the mechanisms that are added to the game through those legacy elements, um, I really enjoy those. They're um, not too complicated. Um, they're fun. And they are very surprising. You, you, what comes out of those boxes, you just don't expect. And I love those little surprises and not only what's in the box, but how it ties into the game itself and, and how that affects your decisions. Um, it's so instead of just picking a card uh, to buy, there's more going on into your decision than just that. Or there's different ways to manipulate um, the, the resources that you get, the, the coins that you get. And um, just I think that the designers did a great job of taking something that's, that everybody knows and injecting these little 
new um, rules and um, strategy elements um, to make the game new and refreshing. And there's a nice variety of each of the new elements and rules. It's not just more of the same. Um, you Just when you think you understand what might be coming next out of the next box, something else comes out of left field and um, really changes things up even more. So it is game after game after game, something new comes out to keep things going. I will say that the components in the game aren't top notch. They're playable, um, but they're just kind of on the low end with the exception of these plastic coins. They do, they'd go with plastic coins um, over basic cardboard. Um, but some of these other things could have been you know, handled a little bit better, but it doesn't detract from the gameplay, just something I thought I'd comment on. I don't think that the new rules or elements added make the games any longer, um, especially if the people that really know what they're doing and know how to get the right cards to get their little engines going, um, you can really zoom through these games as you normally would. So don't worry about any additional time being added. What I do think is really neat is that when you're done with the 10 game campaign, your game is finished and you can play it again. Um, it's not like other legacy games where you have to throw them in the trash. This one, you're done. You've got a custom Machi Koro game that you can play over and over again from that point on, which is great. Um, if you had a good time and you liked those added elements, um, you want to play with them more than just what basic Machi Koro does. Or if you have a friend that wanted to play through the campaign but didn't have the time, but still interested in knowing what is added, you can play with them with this new game. So it's a very nice thing to add in there that you don't have to just throw it away. But when it all comes down to it, I can definitely recommend Machi Koro Legacy to anybody, whether it's a fan of Machi Koro or people who like legacy games or people who are new to the hobby. This is a great way to introduce legacy games to them. Um, the, the rules are just easy enough for them to grasp and things don't get too complicated whenever new, new elements are added. Um, and it gives them an introduction, a new feeling of excitement, a new way to play board games that they would have never um, experienced somewhere else. So I definitely recommend this one as, as one to play with a family or um, you know, some friends that you have that are new to board games. Um, as well as seasoned gamers. It's a lot of fun for everybody. That being said, when you boil it all down, it's still Machi Koro. So if you or someone you know that you wanna, might wanna play this with doesn't like Machi Koro, you're not gonna like this game. Um, there's not enough changes to it um, that manipulate it to where it's the element, main elements of Machi Koro uh, are, are different enough for it to feel completely different. Um, all that to say, you know, if you don't like Machi Koro, if you don't like sometimes the take that element or um, when people steal your coins and or everything being completely based off of the dice rolls, essentially, if you don't like that, that's still here in this game. So you probably want to stay away from it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, well, then please like the video. And then also I ask that you subscribe to the Lighten Up Initiative so you'll be alerted to more videos as they come out. If you have any questions about Machi Koro Legacy or anything else, post them in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Until next time, don't take the board game hobby too seriously, just lighten up.